Hello, and welcome to the 29th Annual Pan-African Film and Art Fest held here at Aziz Gallery, 3343 West 43rd Street, here in Lemert Park. We are celebrating the annual, the 29th Annual Pan-African Film and Art Fest. My name is Khalifa Bey. I am the assistant to the curator of this wonderful art fest, Alan and thank you for joining us. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take you on a tour of the fabulous artwork that is here down at Aziz Gallery, introduce you to some of the artists, and make sure that you have a wonderful time, even though it's virtual. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Smiles from Africa and its curator, Shaka. Hello everyone, my name is Adeyemi Shaka with Smiles from Africa. Um, at, at this present time we're looking at a stone called Biku from Central Africa. This particular stone, all done by black hands by the way, um, has natural grains of different colors running through the pieces and all the individual pieces are once again done by hand. This particular stone has blues, green, pink, brown, and all the different shades. So each piece, once again, very unique and one of a kind. This particular piece that you're looking at, stone carver, left this with a raw look, and this is smooth to the touch, sanded down with a number one sandpaper to the finest of sandpapers, soft to the touch. Very rare and unique pieces, all one of a kind, here at Aziz Gallery, Smiles from Africa. our second vendor, Baltimore Bag Company. I love these bags. I, if you're into leather, real leather, not the fake mm, kind of leather, here is Baltimore Bag Company. Hi, I'm Jerry OJ, and I created Baltimore Bag Company out of a need, because when I was in my store, people would come to me and say, they wanted something made in America and there was nothing in the store that's made in America. Everything was imported from China and other places and they were not leather. So I created Baltimore Bag Company. First I did my research and found out that Baltimore, the name Baltimore, Baltimore City was one of the first industrial city that all the jobs were taken out of and exported overseas. And when my kids moved to Baltimore, I said, you know what? I'll name the company after Baltimore and create some jobs. And that's why we have Baltimore Bay Company. And it's made from 100% natural lead. That is wonderful because for years I have been looking for actual real leather bags. To smell it. You can actually smell, smell the hide. You can smell the hide. <laughs> King, uh, we had a conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago about uh, the difference between bonded leather and 100% leather. Can you explain that? Yes, a lot of people don't know that what they are buying out in the stores that's imported, a whole lot of it is bonded leather. It has this high gloss, very shiny, very appealing, but it's not real leather, it's bonded leather. And the difference between bonded leather and genuine leather is bonded leather is all the car makers send all their crushed up leftover leather and they are crushed, glued back together, bonded back together into like a mat like format and then cut into bags, high gloss, painted several layers 
and that is what you see in the stores and they're pretty expensive but they're not real leather that's why they crack and they don't have that natural smell of leather they're not real leather they're leather but they're not sure. genuine leather so you always have to look for genuine leather they don't break and they don't crack they would last forever you may find this 100 years from now at Goodwill <laughs> Yeah, because that's where you find most leather bags. They most leather bags. The, goodwill, people really don't the vintage bags. Hands. That's where you find vintage bags because these are real natural leather. With natural leather, this bag and the one you got, it's like four of a kind. Because of a whole hide, I may be able to get five or ten bags out of it. So that is why you have five of a kind, one of a kind. These are all one-of-a-kind bags. So after we make all our bags, whatever's left over, we create one-of-a-kind, which are all our leftovers and all individual pieces. No two are the same. This, there's four of a kind. So if you have one of it, there's four of you in the whole world that has it. In your bag, same as this, same as this. These are all natural lambskin leather. In a case like this, which is also a whole cow hide, you would have maybe one hide, you would have two bags or three bags because the whole hide is about 50 feet and this is about 15, 10 feet of leather, even though it looks pretty small. So an example of that is this. I hate to say that. This is the same spec as one of the famous brands, if you know. It's a, what we call the Neverfull bag. And it's trimmed with natural leather that's not dyed. And as it ages, it will get very dark and it will get brown. Just like the scale, it will get tan and tan and get dark brown. And this is what happens with natural leather. This would become very dark as it gets darker and darker to darker brown as it ages. This is dyed, so all the natural leather would be dyed, and then we can get 5, 6, 10, 20 of a, of a kind. So we can get more of a kind, scales up. But like I said, all natural leather, genuine leather, you would have few of a kind, and so they're a little bit more expensive. And that is what you have here. But I have made mine more affordable for the average people to be able to afford it. So they range between three and four hundred dollars. In this case, this is a hundred dollars, but it's one of a kind. There are no two of it, and you get to have one of a kind. Absolutely. Can you give us your Etsy, your email, your Facebook? Ultima Bear Company, Instagram, and my Etsy. It's Etsy. Dot com shop Baltimore bag company. Thank you so very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, these bags are absolutely fabulous. Our next artist is Jeffrey Stevenson. He's been exhibiting at the Art Fest for many, many years now. Jeffrey Stevenson. Well, if you go to my website, jeffreystevenson.com, in the bio statement, there's a bio and then there's an artist statement. And in the artist statement, I tell the world that colors are, are everything that we have. And so I travel the world, the world is my color field backdrop. And so everything that you see in the world, you can put it on canvas, you can make something out of it and so, this particular piece that we're looking at right here, this is a mixed medium piece and it's called Chosen People. And with all of the civil unrest in our society as black people, we built this country free of charge. God always has me uh, paying homage to our ancestors through my work. And so every day when I get up, I think about my ancestors. I think about my forefathers and I want to put it into the illustration. And so we're proud, we're black folk, we're, we're, we love ourselves. The black paint is, 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 resonates because you can't get 
black out of white, you can get white out of black, but people know colors. And so I love the blackness of my skin. Um, being displaced from the motherland, Africa, we are spiritually connected. And so the artwork brings the world uh, back together full circle, even though we've been displaced, even though we've been separated. The art is universal, and so people have come to me from Africa and said, what tribe are you from? Where are you from? And I know where I'm from. My folks are from Guinea. Um, and so this is a depiction of, of my ancestry, who I am. Each title is symbolic of something that we've done in life or what we're going to do. Uh, each title signifies um, who we are, chosen people, a virtuous woman. I have black angels. We've never seen black angels. They've always been depicted as white angels. And so I've learned to love myself through, I am, through who I am with the artwork. And so I'm gonna stop there. Thank you. Thank you for that. Website, telephone, information where we may see your art online somewhere. The website is jeffreystevenson.com, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N. The phone number 213-307-0701. Thank you. When people walk through the doors out of these galleries, this is, this is what they face. This is what they see. So I just want to thank you for participating. And people, please, this would look great in an entryway to an office, a big entryway into your home, a conference room. Jeffrey Stevenson. And give us that number one more time. 213-307-0701. I'd like to thank the Film Festival for all the years of exhibiting. Our next vendor is Designs by Ardina. And you may not think of photo restoration as an art form, but Designs by Ardina has taken photo restorations to a whole new level. Amen. Thank you, Khalifa. <laughs> um, yes, so I create memorable you know, legacy art, and that's from taking old photos as well as new photos and creating them into art, bringing the life back into those art, into those photos, because there are stories in your photo. And just like we've just celebrated Black History Month, we all have history in our lives, and if it's captured in a photograph, then this is another way of telling your stories. Absolutely. How did you get started in this process? Well, actually, I'm an artist from what, five, six years old. Um, however, uh, I went back to school after being laid off. This was mid midlife, <laughs> and uh, I took up graphic design. And from there, graphic design has an element of art in it. But from there, I started studying digital um, art, and I started working on some of the old photos in my own family. And from there, I started just being commissioned out from friends, and then I turned it into a business. So initially it was a hobby? I would say kind of. I um, already had the graphic design and that was a business. So I kind of just studied a little bit about, um, like I said, digital art and then incorporated it into my business. Can you tell us a little bit of how the process worked or is that giving away trade? <laughs> <laughs> so basically I'll start with the old photos and the conditions that I find them in. They're torn, they're uh, missing parts, they are um, burned, spills and cracks. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the water damage. But mostly, I would say, what's really common is the fading because photos will eventually fade. You have to photo and see if they're cracks, tears, or some of the things that I just mentioned. And from there, what we do is repair and restore the photos. 
So we try to bring them back to as close to the original photo as much as possible. And from that point, a lot of people, they're satisfied with that. But what I like to do is offer what's called restoration art, take it to the next level. I do digital painting, and that can be um, turning those photos into what's called sepia. Or I can take a black and white photo, do the digital painting, and create the art from that point. That's, that's, that's exciting because I, I look at these and I have seen some of them before. And this all black and white to the color has just, it astounds me. It astounds me and how, and how you can do that. Now, tell us how we can find you. Absolutely. Well, I am on Facebook, okay, I'm Designs by Ardena. You can also reach out to me on my website, which is designsbyardena.com. You can also email me at ardena at designs by Ardena. My phone number is 323-455-1251. Repeat that number again. Sure. 323-455-1251. And because I know Ardena and she's not telling everything about her, <laughs> tell us about your advertising and logo making and your printing services. Okay, so that's the graphic design um, side of the business. So we help businesses. We just want them to stand out and also represent their vision and their mission. Okay, so I do uh, business cards, letterhead, logos, banners, flyers, whatever you need to promote your business, as well as Zoom backdrops. That's real big, so I do that as well. Thank you, Ardina, for participating. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be moving on to our next artist. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with our next artist, Yindi. Yindi. Yindi Amaferwa. It means a female born on Saturday, born with a quick and active mind. And Ferwa means strength. Wonderful. Tell us about your art. Well, I have a couple of mediums represented here. The work that's on the wall are original printmaking, that's the method that was used, and I'm so honored to have been taught this method by our great resident artist, Aziz, Aziz Diagne, um, that he thought as much of my creative approach to teach me the medium I'm honored by every day, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be a part of the art gallery. In terms of what it inspires, if you look at the work, it's the human spirit. You can see more of my work uh, at the Instagram page, which is Yendi Collections Art. Also look for Yendi Collections, and my website is yendicollections.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with another creative artist, Hats by Yagi. And the designer of that how those hats are. Hi, my name is Kim. And uh, I make Yagi's hats. I crochet the hats. Like the one I have on too. Okay, tell us how you started. Um, I started uh, due to a tragedy. Um, my son was killed. And when he was killed, I had purple hair. And with the death of my son and that purple hair, I just, it just made me a little kookier. So I said, uh, I better make a hat. Uh, so I made a black hat. I hadn't, hadn't made a hat in years. So I made the hat. I went out uh, with a girlfriend. She said, come on, I want to get you out of the house. I said, okay. So we went to a nail salon. So I'm sitting there, you know, chatting with her. And a lady comes up to me and she says, I like your hat. And I said, oh, thank you. So she walks away, she comes back, she says, where'd you get that hat? And I said, I made it. So she said, oh. So I looked at my girlfriend and said, you know, I wish this lady would stop talking to me, you know. And so anyway, the lady, you know, walks away, she comes back and she said, uh, I want you to make me one of those hats and I want you to tell me how much you'll charge me. And I said, lady, I've never made a hat like this for anyone. I don't really know what I'm doing, I just made it. 
And so she said, I want you to make me one. So I said, okay. So I, so she came back and I said, I know I'm gonna get rid of this woman right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her a really high price. So she came back, so she said, how much? So I said, a hundred. So she went right in her purse and she gave me $50. And I said, oh my goodness. So I said, I never made a hat like this. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. She said, that's okay. Uh, give me your name and number, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I want you to make that hat. So I said, okay. So I was so nervous. I stayed up all night trying to make that hat, you know, make it look perfect. And I called her the next day and I delivered it. So um, I, it was very therapeutic to make the hat. So I decided after I made my black one that I wanted a red one. I said, oh, maybe I'll make a yellow one. So when I looked, I had made about 20 hats. Like your Erica Badu hat, like hat you have on now is just simply, simply gorgeous. Thank you, thank you. So let me ask you this. Where can people reach you? Uh, you can, my hats are currently on sale at Aziza's Gallery in Lamert Park. And you can reach me on Instagram at Pisces Chick 24. Pisces Chick 24. Yeah, because people, when I have the hat on, people say, who, who, who that? That's that Pisces <laughs> Chick. I think they're talking about me, but that's, not. that's right. We're the, the, we're the Pisces, Pisces Chick, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But no. The, they're most wonderful, the different colors that you have, the brown, the turquoise, especially like that Lakers purple and gold hat you have right there. Thank you, thank you. But uh, again, you can find Yai's hats at uh, Aziz Gallery, 3343 West 43rd Street, here at Lamert Park. Give us your information, the telephone number one more time. I'm on Instagram at Pisces Chick. 24, and that's the best way to reach me or come to Aziz's Gallery in Lamar Park. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with one of my favorite designers, Carolyn Wilborn from Wilborn Sisters Design. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, sweetie. How are you? I'm finding you today. Fine. I had to take that off. I know. <laughs> Look at you. Thank you. Thank you for participating in the Pan-African Art Fest once again. Well, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I know you're going to talk and tell about all your fabulous, fabulous designs like I'm wearing. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, I have you looking fabulous. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, well, great. Well, I am one of seven sewing sisters originally from Tennessee, and I grew up in a family in a home with seven sewing machines, so I couldn't help but get the bug. So what I've done is I've brought fashion from every arena of my life. You get to go to business with grab dresses, you get to get funky, go into different concerts and all. And then you get to come to America with the hats, because I put the hats with everything I make. So you will see an array of fashions and fabrics and all that. I can't just do one thing, because I'm multi-faceted when it comes to fashion, just like every woman. I just want to cater to all women. And most of my designs, if you'll notice, I do the seams on the outside. That's my signature. It just gives us a little, little edge. That's, you know, you have to find your niche. What's your slogan for your clothes? Designs to suit the soul. Will Warren Sisters. Design with you in mind. See, that's what I like about her wear. Is Again, it can go from day to night. It can go from fancy to just comfort. And um, tell us how, I know you have uh, seven sisters. And you also have a sister in Atlanta that does designs as well. Well, tell us who you have designed for and where we have seen your fashion. Okay, but well then I've designed for, well, Kim Whitley has been the last celebrity that I've made. She wore something of mine in um, that The Lion King. And then I've just designed things for Marie Hartsford, for a lot of people that are in the gospel industry. I'm Shirley Caesar, you know, um, the Winans. Just a lot of different people like that. And then, of course, local Diane Watson and Maxine Waters and just an array of, you know, from people in the village over there <laughs> to just everybody, you know. Angela Vassett, I made something for her once, and Cicely Tyson. We did something for Ruby D in a play and uh, the Sounds of Blackness back in the day. So, you know, the list goes on. 
Absolutely. So tell us where you're located. Okay, well, I have a shop, 4745 West Lawson. That's between La Brea and Fairfax, right there across from Madeira Park. But now I'm here in this fabulous gallery. Uh, one of my aspirations to be in an upscale gallery, Aziz Gallery here, 43rd in the Lurch. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And I am most honored to have with me Aziz from Aziz Gallery. Welcome to the gallery. Welcome to Lamont Park. Uh, we're doing the Pan African Film Festival, 29 years. Um, we've been having different artists coming different uh, each week. Uh, this is my gallery, and you guys are welcome. Welcome to Lamont Park. Welcome to Aziz Gallery. Absolutely. I, I've been working with you for a couple of years now, and everyone is fascinated by your processes, mm -hmm. by your different mediums, and the fact that you have taken over this space. Tell us a little bit about this space. Uh, this used to be John Singleton Production Company. Uh, I think beside Boys in the Hood, all of his movie was produced here and casted. And, uh, you know, happened to be a friend, very good friend. And I work in every movie he, you know, you know produced. And uh, when, you know, after uh, his uh, passing, I just decided, you know, I've been in the neighborhood for 35 years. Then uh, that was appropriate to do a continuation of, uh, you know, what he was doing in the neighborhood. And uh, basically, uh, this gallery is basically to incubate young artists. It's not really for the old one or something. Every, we can show, you know, all the other artists can come and show their work, but the direction is just for new artists who never made it to a gallery. Get into the processes and the mediums that you use, because your work is, it's like none that I have ever seen. It, it, it's so much in intertwined with, within the pieces. So explain some of the processes that you use. The, uh, the process I use, this one you're facing, is called calligraph, interglio in Italian. Basically, you carve a plate, it's over there, but basically a, you carve a plate and uh, to produce, to, to make the, to make the, the artwork. Each piece is actually individual carved. You can never reprint one. You can have the shape, but each one of them is one of the kind. Uh, they done in acid-free paper, uh, and they all uh, oil-based, uh, uh, oil-based. And we actually giving art class, we're teaching the process, like for around six, seven classes, we will teach anyone. You don't need to have a, a painting ability. As long as you have fingers and can see, we can teach you this in less than a month. Uh, then that's one of the processes, color uh, graph and print making. I have the printing press here, and that will be available for the community. That, uh, like this is, uh, uh, the glass painting is painted backward on glass. Is uh, I just pick, I can pick one of those to show. Uh, the process is basically you have to do the details first, and after that you put the layer in the top. This is another process we're going to teach it here too. You see, that's the, that's the front, but it's painted backwards. All the details are put, you put the details first, and then it's basically the same as the print making, uh, because the print making, the same is done backwards. Like the process of print making is this, is, uh, and that come from this, is the plywood, uh, bathroom linoleum, and hammer's glue, and a razor blade. That's, and you cut the image, 
the image ended up being this, and this ended up being that second one over there. Then uh, this is the process we will teach, you know, from eight up to eight to eighty. <laughs> then uh, in, in the gallery. And we open seven days a week, uh, Monday, you know, by appointment only, and the rest we open 11 to 7. You're welcome to come anytime in Lumut Park. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at Aziz Gallery, 3343 West 43rd Street, here in Lamarck Park, the 29th Annual Film and Art Fest, the only art fest in the world where you're going to see these one-of-a-kind films and these one-of-a-kind pieces never, never anywhere else on the planet. Come here, support us, be with us, come and enjoy this atmosphere, all the arts, all the designers. The only place on the planet where they are here in Lemur Park and virtual at the Pan-African Film Fest, path.org, www.paff.org for over 100 films and here at the gallery in Lemur Park to see things you will never ever see on the planet. Thank Come you on for in. joining us. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you for joining us. I'm here. Come see us. Next year. Yes. Yes. We're waiting for you. The door is open. Yeah.